My name is Ian Anderson. I studied here at La Trobe uh, in the early 1990s. I started doing subjects in the arts, but then went on to do a PhD in sociology and anthropology. I have a long-standing passion for working around Indigenous issues, Indigenous rights. I have a, an Aboriginal mother and a non-Indigenous father. My father was a, a labourer. Um, so we moved around quite a lot. Uh, I think that by the time I was 20, I'd lived in about 20 different houses. So my kind of early years didn't prepare me at all for university. In fact, I was pushing hard to convince my family that actually I should uh, go to university. And I think the thing I really liked about La Trobe is that it had a real feeling of, of welcoming for students from diverse backgrounds. It felt like uh, more of a community. I actually loved it as a student. So I, you know, I was part-time, well old at the age of 24 then, <laughs> and working as a junior doctor in what was called Preston and Northcote Community Hospital. And I then went to work for the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service as a general practitioner and later as a chief executive officer. I fundamentally started to ask why, 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 why is the not just the health, but the health care for Aboriginal people so poor. You can't answer that as a doctor. You really need to answer it as a social scientist. A social scientist who starts to inquire about how, how inequalities in health care are developed, how a system of health care develops in a way that privileges some people and disadvantages, in this case, the people who have really got the poorest health in Australia. That led to a whole bunch of questions about how do we change the system, how do we change policy. And I, I found that my training here in the social sciences was fundamentally important. It really has empowered me throughout my career. I think one of the, the toughest things I've ever done in my career was working as a, a Deputy Secretary in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And over three years leading what was called the refresh and close the gap, which is the most important intergovernmental agreement in Indigenous affairs. So it sets the agenda for Indigenous affairs for the next decade, but particularly doing it in partnership with Indigenous Australian organisations. That was a historical first. I don't think there has ever been an agreement between the Commonwealth and state and territory governments that included non-government partners. Most people from underprivileged backgrounds always carry that sort of sense that they're not quite the right fit. But I think in retrospect, I was. I just didn't believe in myself. As a learner, I was actually okay. <laughs> I'd done it in my own right. 